This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We're rocking out, man. Did you hear that? That rock music playing in the background? That funky bass line. Slapping the bass. All of that good stuff. Oh, my God. I keep forgetting it's Easter on Sunday. It's two days away from Easter because... Catherine's birthday is Sunday, so there is no Easter around here. It's all more me now, Catherine. You already you know get I mean? the uh, you already get a present already all fixated and taken. Oh yeah, it. yeah. She she's really good about that stuff. She just like I don't need any presents or that stuff. We've been together for forty four years. I think you can calm down. So I said yes, dear. Whatever you need. Um, here's something I I haven't even looked at yet. The best Easter candy of all time is definitely not bunny corn. What the hell is bunny corn? Bunny corn? Yes, that's I haven't even mean. heard of is it. it. Like, is it like candy corn? I suppose. It gotta be, isn't it? That's... Yeah, it looks yeah, it looks like essentially candy corn, except it's like pink, white, yellow. Oh, blue, let me green, tell you, candy, yeah. candy corn's already terrible, so I can tell you it's not yes. corn. Well, let me put it this way. I might, might be the only kid ever in the history of the world, all the way back to being four years old. I've never liked Easter candy. It's all, it's nothing but sugar. Yeah. It's like, Jesus, could this be any sweeter? Or, I mean, you have a couple, it's fine, but you know what I'm saying. Well, like, yeah. what are like the mainstays? Like peep? Like peeps are, I think, bad because it's just, yeah. it's just marshmallows with like yes. more sugar on top. Aren't yep. Cadbury eggs? I've never Cadbury had one. Eggs. Those are the ones with like the cream in the middle. Yeah. Yes. They're pretty good. Not great, but they're pretty good. Otherwise, and then like the big chocolate hollow bunnies. Those are yeah. always popular, which I mean, it's just chocolate. So I can't complain too much about that. Okay. At my house with four boys, what happened to the chocolate bunnies? You bite the heads off first. You snap them right off, man. <laughs> <laughs> the bunny heads are gone right away. That's all I have to say. It's like nice brothers. I got beheading animals at Easter. That's a good thing. So Easter is this Sunday. Catherine's birthday is this Sunday. Uh, we got a pretty big weekend coming up. Got a lot of stuff to do from from all of that. But uh, I don't know. It's it's pretty damn cool. Uh, Catherine and I did something I have never done before in my life. She was washing a quilt, mm-hmm. and I happened to be walking by just as she was taking it out of the dryer. Mm-hmm. I found out yet another thing about me I didn't know. I suck at folding things up. I am not good at folding up blankets. Oh, blankets are tough sometimes. They're terrible. You can't tell which side is which, and it's all twisted up and folded up. I was like, Jesus, just go buy a new one. We'll throw this one away. <laughs> she didn't do that, though. We, we got it done eventually, eventually. And we found out the reason it was difficult is that one of the dryer, those little balls that you put in a dryer to you know, add a little nice extra odor to it or something, yeah, one of them was caught up in the corner, and that's why it wouldn't balance out. It's like, oh, Jesus, whatever. Whatever works. Our Minnesota Twins won last night. I did not get to see. And, of course, my favorite thing is that I, I hopped on social media and whined and pissed. and mo- I went on MLB. I went on Bally Sports. I went on everything, ESPN, everything you could think of. I could not get the Twins game yesterday. Opening day. You would think that at least at opening day, they would offer all games everywhere. It's a good way to sell your product, isn't it? Yeah. Baseball is terrible at marketing. Yeah. It's <laughs> that, that's really bad. Mistake, just thinking yep. baseball wants to grow the game. <laughs> I mean, I just don't understand. Learn how to market. You want everybody watching that first game of the year. What, what the hell are you thinking? I don't get it. Is it greed? Yeah, I don't. I would think if it was greed, they would say, hey, you can pay for it and you can watch it on the moon if you want. But, yeah, yes. baseball and, I mean, Bally's, maybe it's just because Bally's isn't the greatest TV network. No, that's where, what I hear, yeah. So, like, they, you're not able to stream the game. So, pretty much, I think if you have to have direct TV or, you know, YouTube TV or something that covers Bally's and live in the area. Because I don't know why you yep. – you wouldn't be able to watch down in Florida. That makes no sense. I can't, I couldn't watch. I went to ba- Valley. I went to Direct TV. I went to everything you mentioned, and they did not have the game on yesterday. And I just don't understand. Opening day, every game should be available everywhere. Imagine how many more millions of people around here, people that have moved from Minnesota to, to California, to Chicago, mm-hmm. to New York, to Florida, whatever. They'd all watch the game. How is that not a moneymaker for you? 
Yeah, and as the, like from the twin standpoint, not being able to stream the games anymore, you would think that would almost be a non-starter because yeah. in the yep. winter, which I mean, we're still technically you know just getting out of it. There's a lot of people that like yourself that go to Florida, Arizona, somewhere nice and warm that want to watch mm -hmm. baseball, and now they can't. I don't understand why you don't want to promote your product. That makes, I mean, I even if you don't make a dime off it, you're still promoting your product which is a very good thing for your product. Yes. I don't get that. I just don't understand it at all. And I'm very pissed off. Well, they win last night, four to one, something like that. Uh, yep. Four to one. Yeah. Yeah. It was four to one. Like that uh, was a ninth inning. The top of the ninth was a pretty big inning for him. I know that. Cause I was, here's what happens too. here's what I love because on uh, MLB network, they will post the game and you click this watch now. And then it just mm -hmm. goes to the thing. The game will be on in a minute. The game's half over. Don't give me that on in a minute. <laughs> You know, give me that bullshit. But, um, yeah, I just I just don't understand. I, I want to watch the game, but the ninth inning, I just – and here's the best part of it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they put up the stats up in the upper left corner of your screen, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you try to watch it more than 10 seconds, an icon goes right over it so you can't see it. So you have to click out, click back in, click out, click back in, click out to see what the score is even. You can't, you can't watch the game. You can't even check the score unless you click in and out about five times. It's like, gee, what are you, what are you, why are you torturing your fans? And here's another bit of torture. I think I brought this up. I know we got to get going here, but uh, in 1977, 76, I think, no, I think it was 77. We're going to Capitol Records. I bought six seats right behind the twins dugout in the second row behind the twins dugout for every game set at the old, you know, Mets, uh, Met, uh, Metropolitan uh, field or whatever the hell it was called. I don't even remember yeah. what it was called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The old Met. Met stadium, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so in any case, we're doing all this stuff going through all that and all the rest of it. I bought six seats behind the twins dugout in 1977, maybe 76 for $11,000 that year. It was 11,000 bucks. I checked on the price this year. It's one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. It's jumped up a little bit. Just let me point Just that. Just a little bit. Yeah, one hundred and sixty G's. Really? Okay. Well, you tell, so you're telling me you didn't get your uh, your seats next to mine? <laughs> I did not. Uh, you 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 spent your one hundred and sixty G's, and I backed off the deal. Yeah. So I'm working for free the next uh <laughs> like decade or so just to help. yeah yeah there you go <laughs> that Six, yeah sixteen thousand a year for the next 10 years that's wonderful <laughs> uh that's for one season too unfortunately so oh, it keeps yeah. stacking up so this better be the year <laughs> yeah they better win because otherwise you'll be missing another nine seasons or something like yes. that but <laughs> hey it's great though twins one we'll talk to phil about that in just a couple of seconds march means it's springtime and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and all that good stuff the air ducts too of course uh, the air ducts are the first item on my list. I know that. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res Platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z -E -E or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today. And be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res, spell it forward or backward, it spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and you can beat the spring cleaning rush. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste.
in addition to having the best selection in town, K&L Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free, which is very important. If you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one and don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you no longer using, call Jim at K&L Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's extremely knowledgeable, will help you get top dollar. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders k l Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You damn right. The light, happy music, baby. That's all I have to say. Wow, well, I, I thought you were off the bandwagon. I'm sorry. I... Well, I thought I thought you bailed two weeks ago during spring training, Tom. They kicked me off the bandwagon, Phil, because <laughs> I tried ninety-five channels. I could not get the game. Yeah, what? So I caught I caught uh, oh. the last part of the segment. So wait a second. There's the light, happy music. Yes, there the Twins is. are no, one and zero. Oh. Don't worry that Royce Lewis may have torn his quad and might miss a large chunk of the season. Don't. We haven't gotten the MRI results back, but. Um, so wait, so. Now, I, what I had to do locally is, because we, we cut the cord on cable about five years ago, Yeah, and we are a YouTube TV household, but of course, YouTube TV and all the Bally's properties have not had an agreement since about 2020, so right. we can't watch them there. I also can't just give the Twins or Bally's 20 or 30 bucks a month, which I yeah. would love to do to watch directly because they're trying to protect their cable deal, so I had to sign up for another streaming service, Fubo TV locally here for the right. season so i'm paying like an extra four hundred dollars for the season to watch year. twins yep. games That's yeah correct which is ridiculous and, so i'm with you man like i it, i had to make a panic sign up like 48 hours ago just to watch twins games. i know and i couldn't even do that for some reason i couldn't even fubo wouldn't let me do that even so i don't know what the hell that's all about uh you know i tried MLB, I tried Bally, I tried everything. I even went to Score North, and you guys stiffed me. Yeah, we, <laughs> we well, we tried to run the games illegally for a few hours there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the lawyer, the lawyers came in. I think, yeah, I think the only way out of market, I think the only way for you, maybe satellite, but I think you'd have to do the MLB TV out of market package, where you can. It's funny because MLB TV has an out-of-market package where you can pay a bajillion dollars or whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. but you can't watch local games. So I don't know, man. They, they need, like you guys are saying, no sport makes it harder to yeah. find the games. Yep. And by the way, like football has, football is national. You The games are on Fox and CBS. It's once a week, but there's also yep. like a Thursday game. Baseball, you just need to make the games as accessible as possible. I agree. Couldn't I don't understand why you wouldn't want somebody, let's say I'm living in Arizona, why wouldn't you want me watching the Twins game if I'm from Minnesota originally? That makes no sense to me. In, in theory, you should be able to with their MLB TV package, but I don't know if they were having technical problems or yeah. what their deal was. But. Yep, because I couldn't get it. I tried on MLB several times. And even to check the score, because they would show the icon and all that stuff, and they would show the innings and the outs and all that stuff. But after nine seconds, at 10 seconds, this board would go over it, so you couldn't see it anymore. So I had to click in and out and in and out and in and out just to check one score. This is like 100 years ago, and they used to do ticker tape updates yeah. on the radio. for They, yeah. they didn't televise games yet because TV didn't exist. And there'd literally be a guy like doing play-by-play, -play, imaginary play-by-play, -play based on the ticker tape box score. And there's a line drive to right field, flap, like he's got a, you know, sound effect in the background. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you guys something. You just reminded me of something. I, I was going to bring this up to you guys before, but I got to do it now because I last night, same situation. I don't think that people in Minneapolis-St. Paul understand that the two best radio and television markets in America are Chicago and Minneapolis-St. Paul. Those, And I'm not making that up just because I'm from Minneapolis-St. Paul. That's not at all. I mean, there's some great people, obviously, in New York and Chicago and Los Angeles, but the, the local news itself is not very good. It's nowhere near as good as Minneapolis-St. Paul or Chicago, mm -hmm. right? I agree. Yeah. There was a guy. He was all excited about his. I can't remember where he's from. I think he's from Kansas, so I think he was rooting for Kansas City. I'm watching him. This guy is on, I mean, this is a big market. This is not some little bohunk small town. 
He's on there last night. To, I tell you what, it's going to be a ball. This is the news anchor. Going to be a ball watching my team, the Kansas City Royals. Oh, I tell who talks like that? <laughs> I mean, why do they do the phase, fake talk thing? I don't get it. I think there's, I think, I think you've cracked open of what well, we could talk for an hour on this, but I think what's happening is <laughs> there you go. local news and even like radio, pretty much traditional radio and TV jobs that used yeah. to be really the only show in town for decades yes. and decades in terms of audience share, advertiser revenue, right? So you'd get, you'd get the, the, you know, think about in the twin cities, like Paul majors made a ton of money in the nineties. Cause he was the top anchor in the whatever. And I think now you're just, you're getting a lot of people that probably wouldn't have held those jobs 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. Cause yep. the industry is not as appealing to people that would have gotten into it in the sixties, seventies, eighties and nineties. So you, yeah, a lot, a lot a of amateurism on these TV stations around the country now is what I'm saying. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. It's not the same as it was at one time. Paul Majors is a good example. Ron Majors' his brother, obviously, the Dave Moores of the world, Don Shelby, you got Frank and Amelia. I, I, it's a great news market. People do not understand how good our news is in Minneapolis-St. Paul. Yeah, and I, and we, we're lucky because I feel like, I mean, every company is, has been cutting back for 25 years, but yeah. I feel like the production level and the resources we've just been able to keep it at a higher level than some of the other top 25 or 30 markets around the country. When you go watch, it's funny. Like when you travel around, you go to Denver, go to some other like top 15 yep. or 20 markets. And you're right. It looks like a rinky dink production operation oh, yeah. oh, in yeah. some like, co like a college TV station or something. And it's an ABC affiliate or a CBS yeah. affiliate. There was a guy, and he was a good newsman, but the intro for him, he, he was he's retired, long retired now. It was 27 years ago, the first time I was ever in West Palm Beach in my life. I'm, I tune in the news, and I get, he was a really good news anchor. But for some reason, the intro went like this. They would go like, da 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 And now, with Channel 4 News, your anchor, Kurt Funger. And he would go, Funger. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? What are you, a tiger? <laughs> what do you say? What do you say the last name twice or just, just once? No, just once. What do you go, okay. Funger? <laughs> what are you, growling, are you growling at me, are you? Is that the plan? I love the, uh, I love announcer guys. I mean, you've been, yeah. you've been big voice announcer guy throughout your career. My favorite, though, is the old Yankee Stadium. Is it, was it, um, God, what was the guy's name for oh, decades? Oh, yes. Yep. He passed away in the 90s. Yep. But Derek Jeter took a recording of his <laughs> intro and played it for the rest of his career. So they had Susan or whoever the new the new yep. um in in stadium PA announcer was, but then Derek Jeter would come to the plate and it was still this old time, you know, now batting for the Yankees. Number 2, Derek Jeter. Number 2. He would repeat the number at the end of it. What was his name? I know exactly who you're talking about, and I can't think of his name. I'm going to find it. I'm telling you, Yankee Stadium, the first time. Bob Shepard. Bob Shepard, very good. I'm proud of you. Bob Shepard. But going to Yankee Stadium, and I went to the old Yankee Stadium before they tore it down and moved it about two blocks or whatever it is. I don't know, something like that. But going to a Yankees game and listening to all that stuff, listening to him, it was just amazing, the whole thing. And I still remember, man. You got uh, Billy Martin at third base. He's standing there, I think one out. Mickey Mantle comes to the plate. He crushes the ball. The ball is going to leave the stadium, not just the field, the entire stadium. He hit it out of the stadium yeah. to right field. And matter of fact, Mickey Mantle is the one who told me this story many, many years ago. My God, how long ago was that? He's been dead already for 800 years. Yeah. But he said, I said, what was the great thing about that? He goes, the greatest thing about that whole deal was I'm walking basically a slow jog down to first base. I round first base. I'm headed to second. I look to my left, and Billy Martin's tagging up. <laughs> <laughs> How great you just got to make sure. You got to make sure 100%. <laughs> Did it land yet? Billy, you, land? <laughs> Billy you can go, man. You can he, go. It's he's gonna tag up and score on a home run. 
That ball's in New Jersey, man. You can go home. You can you can go to home plate. <laughs> I have heard from several people that Billy Martin was one of the greatest guys to play baseball with. He was just a phenomenal teammate, I guess. What a character, man. Yes. Yeah, he and, how, yes. and he was he was here for how long was he here? Because he was the manager here in the yeah. 70s, was it? Mm -hmm. Or the no, early 80s, was, somewhere in there? I think it was late 70s. I, I believe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it wasn't the early 80s. But he was fantastic. Man. I love that guy. Uh, on the Twins front, by the way. So I don't know, man. Like, this is why I don't watch spring training. And I'm glad that they didn't televise a bunch of spring training games. Because right. I think I probably would have fallen into the doom and gloom like, uh, like you did. Oh, They well. looked great yesterday. They did. Buxton looked healthy, bouncing mm -hmm. around. Pablo Lopez comes in, gives up a home run. And, uh, first batter hits a home run, shuts mm -hmm. the Royals down for the next two hours. Yep. It was great. And then uh, Carlos Correa, back from the plantar fasciitis situation last year, looked great in this game. So I, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, man. I am on the band. With, with or without Royce Lewis for the next two months, yeah. I am drinking Twins Kool-Aid. Why is he so easily hurt? He always gets hurt i know i know I don't get it. great player he's a great player but he's always hurt yeah people smarter than me say that when you suffer multiple knee injuries that sometimes mm -hmm. like the, the, your quad muscles can be in danger because you oh, haven't been, sure. you haven't been working them as much over the last couple of years but yeah it's like any sudden movement and boom <sighs> like the guy strains a muscle or tears an acl or something well that's why i know aj and tevin go home and they gargle like salt water me, 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 just to make sure that the voice doesn't cave in. You know, 100%. Yeah, I don't want to tear any quad muscles on no. the show. No. Yes. <laughs> no, you do not. A, but yeah, that's the, actually, that was the first thing I saw because I was trying to get the game up and I couldn't get the game up. And the first stat that was printed out on the screen was that Royce Lewis was hurt yet again. Was it in the second inning, third inning, something like that? It was, it was, yeah, I can't remember the exact inning, but before he left with the injury, the guy hits a home run. The yeah. guy has a, I mean, he's, He's going to have a 1,000 batting average. <laughs> However long he's out, he's going to have a perfect batting average. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, a great win, though, for the Twins. You're absolutely right. It's, it's fun. Great win for them. It's on the road. They have today off. My guess would be they'll lose tomorrow and win on Sunday. That's my okay. prediction. I would take two out of three. Oh, God, Start yes. the, on the road. You know, smart people would say to the, the Tom Kellys of the world that, you can't win a division in the first month of the season, but you can lose one. There's oh, been yeah. years where they've started like 0-9 and the season's just <laughs> over. So just just weather the storm, get some of those relievers back, you know, win two out of three here. Just don't don't start one and nine, basically, is the the rallying cry here. I love Tom Kelly. I always did, always will. I ran into him over at Midland Hills Golf Course about five years ago. He's getting uh, getting on a cart ready to go out and play. And all of a sudden, I hear Tom Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> Say, like, oh, TK, how you doing, buddy? TK, <laughs> the greatest of all. I remember one time Sid Hartman was out talking to Tom Kelly, and a guy called in, and it did used to. It's when, like I said, the show exploded. We had like a thirty-five share, or some damn thing. And this guy calls in, and he says, uh. Tom Kelly, as the manager of the Minnesota Twins, I have a suggestion for you, and I think it would work because this is a guy that gives his all. You need to reach out and get Tom Bernard. He's like, what? He goes, no, no, he'd be great. I don't care where you play him, he'd be great. <laughs> the guy's just pulling TK's tit, but it was really funny. Just throw him out there at second base. You know? <laughs> yeah, throw him out there at second base. Just at toss the time, him I weighed about 315, so that would have been a smart move. <laughs> TK, he is, yeah, he... I've gotten to know him just a little bit the last right. like 10 or 15 years, you know, way after his managerial career. And I'll never yep. forget just a quick anecdote because I know you guys are up against the clock here. But I used to cover the Twins beat as a writer and a, and a radio host for 1500 ESPN. Right. 2010 through like 2013. And and TK would show up. This is when Ron Gardenhire still managed the Twins. Sure. And TK would show up just during batting practice holding his little fungo bat. He wouldn't be like, you know, he wouldn't be. Uh, running any drills or anything, but he'd just be hanging out in the dugout, kind of observing batting practice. And and he had been on our radio show enough to where we kind of got to know each other. But I'm in my mid-late 20s at the time. I'm just a kid trying to figure out baseball. And we sat down before, this is probably like 5.30 or 5.45 before a 7 o'clock game, 5, 5.30. And we sat down in the Twins dugout, and he Love told it. stories uninterrupted oh. for like an hour and a half. 
They literally had to kick us out of the dugout. <laughs> Guys, the game is about to start. And I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just listening to Tom Kelly tell stories yep. for an hour and a half here. So you're going to have to drag me out of this dugout right now. But amazing manager, amazing storyteller, just a legend. If you're too young, because I know we got to go, like Phil said, but if you're too young to remember, you really missed something. When Sid Hartman would interview Tom Kelly. Oh, my God. It was great. <laughs> Our leadoff man. Tom Kelly, Tom, what did you think of the game? Well, Sid, I, w- <laughs> I was just wonderful to listen to because they had these two very unusual voices. It was just great. God, TK, he, he had a couple of years where he was in the booth for some series yeah. with Dick Bramer doing the TV yep. stuff, too. And he would call Dick Bramer Richard. And I think it kind of pissed <laughs> Dick off a little bit. I oh, love Richard. Dick Bramer, too. <laughs> Dick Bramer's another great guy. I'm going to miss him. No doubt about it. He, Cor- yeah, Corey him. Provis, first game in the booth yesterday. And he uh, he ended the broadcast by saying a left-handed toast for the Minnesota Twins, which was Dick Bramer always did a left-handed toast on social media yeah. after each Twins there win. There you so. go. God bless him, man. Great guy. All right, Pally, we will talk. Well, I won't talk to you next week, but I'll talk to you in a, a week from Monday. Yeah, I will uh, I will entertain your audience in your absence on Monday for you. How Just about that? Just think about me carrying around two little children, five and seven years old at Disney World, (laughs) packed to the rafters. Just imagine how much fun I'll be having. Boy. Boy. (laughs) Boy. We might need a a live report from from Tom. Tater tots in the the cargo shorts pockets for the kids. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly. Well, you've done this before, huh? No, no, I I do not have kids or grandkids, but... um, I would definitely stash tater tots in pockets for myself. So I've been there. Oh, okay. I understand. (laughs) All right, pal. We'll talk to you in a bit. See you guys. Thanks a lot. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Mackey, Score North. Be right back in a couple of seconds. Chris Eggert will join us at that time. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? You want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West. Grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida and now can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. Little inside information, I think Matt is going to sell a home for me, as a matter of fact. Uh, And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida. And like Matt is one of us, she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota or maybe that's second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends and contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com, that is OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612-791-2345, 612-791-2345, and work with local professionals that you can trust. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a second to talk about my bank. That would be North American Banking Company. You've heard me talking about them for a long time now. When they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers where you know your banker and they know you. Well, a lot has changed since 1998. This commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. And now the lovely and talented Chris Eggert joins us. Going to Disney next week, huh, Tommy? Going to Disney for five days, baby. That's oh going to be cheap. God. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody was asking me about because you can get you you can get like you get like hire a guide to bring yeah, you around. You can get a fixer. Yep. Uh, I don't know if people realize that a fixer for one day is like five thousand dollars. It's crazy. <laughs> 5G's. Look, that's north. Yeah, I could have figured that out for myself. Thanks. Uh, I don't know, though. If you, if, if you could swing it, they say that's the way to go. Yeah, that's what I understand. I could see that. Well, that's what happens whenever I go to Channel 5 Eyewitness News. I get a, I get a professional leading me through the news office. You know you what I'm a, saying. Yeah, just uh, tap tap one of the fixers. You need a fixer? I'm yeah. not your guy. I do need a fixer, though. There's no question about that. Hey, I have to ask you guys a question, because this morning when I woke up, because I was, I had one of those nights I woke up and I fell asleep and I woke up and I fell asleep. And whenever that happens, I wake up in the morning and I sound like this. What's that country singer's name that does that promotion for Wounded Warriors, I think? Oh, he um, the, he's got a super low voice. Unbelievable. Uh, um, Amazing. I'm, I'm going to be mad I don't get Trace this. Adkins. Trace, Trace Adkins, Adkins, there you nice go. Job. Have you yep. ever seen the, the spot, Tevin? Uh, like once or twice. Once or twice, AJ. Any chance you ever saw this? But he literally comes on and goes, "All you need to do is send sixteen dollars to Wounded Warrior." I'm like, <laughs> "Jesus, <laughs> you're scary!" And he's wearing a leather cowboy hat on top yeah. of it. So what does that he, tell you? He, the first time I heard that, I had to like stop. And I mean, I've heard <laughs> I've heard his music before, but like, yeah, that voice. You're like, "Whoa, geez, Louise." Does he sing that low? I don't think he sings that low, but I, I think, he, think he definitely, so. he definitely, um, you know, more, more like a Johnny Cash ring of fire. You, you know what getting I think those, of? I mean, getting those lower octaves, you know what yeah. I'm saying? What it reminds me of is being like 16 years old and wanted to ask one of my schoolmates out to, on a, on a date to go to a movie or something. And did a call back? Yeah, Tom, I'd like to let you know this is Lucy's father, and I need you to behave when you're on this. Yes, sir, you got it. I'll be behaving the whole time. <laughs> Guy sounded like the devil for, rawr, 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 like, Jesus. Why don't you have another cocktail, for Christ's sake? I think I've got it here if you want to. This is, So this first guy is, one, is a wounded warrior, like, uh, guy who's, like, propped up um, by the service. Like he oh, yeah. From, sure. from, and then we'll go to Trace yeah, Adkins. The need for Wounded Warrior Project continues. Your support is Continue. even more important now Continue. because the greatest casualty is being forgotten. I was in a hospital bed with a very, very... Yeah, it's oh. it, that's deep. Yeah, <laughs> skip the sad part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you skip the sad part. That's a good move, as a matter of fact. But yeah, if I smoke, that would that's exactly what I would sound yeah. like if I smoke cigarettes. He sounds very a little brilliant. bit like um, Sam Elliott, too. I love oh, yeah. Sam Elliott. Do you ever, God, Devin, I don't know if you were around then, but Sam Elliott, the first time he was ever on the, on the KQ morning show, he comes mm-hmm. on and one of the people, uh, was, oh, was one of the women on the show too, said, Sam, I got to tell you, I'm just a, I'm just a huge fan of yours. I love your work. There's a long pause and you hear, well, shit, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fun. He's still in character doing a radio interview. <laughs> That was one great guy. Sam Elliott's a great guy. So what's happening in your world, Pally? Uh, well, uh, there was a bit of a kerfuffle out at the airport yesterday. And um, in the big grand scheme of things, not that big a deal. Oh, but if okay. you're stuck on the airplane, the biggest deal. A couple of airplanes clipped wings out there oh. as they were taxiing or, you know, they, it. you know, when that happens, it's generally not. You know, they bump wings, which is a big deal, and they probably yeah. damage the wings. Yep. Uh, but it's not like there was a plane crash. Or, you know, it's it's a, it's a fender bender, except it's planes. Um, and so uh, we reported this morning that the – and we talked to some passengers. They had to stay on the plane for four hours oh, after that. Oh, God. Jeez. Dude, right there. Like, oh. <laughs> the airport's right there. I I just don't understand that. Like, like, take your pictures, go out and look at it right away. Pull the planes over, and then yeah. get people off the plane. May I ask you a question? Yeah. We're clipping wings for about the fifteenth time this year. Where the door fell off, or you clipped wings, or you did this or that, or you ran into a bridge and killed six people, or you. What the hell is going on? 
you know, we just that crowded now? What What's the deal? I think that wing clipping thing happens f- f- with some oh. frequency. Um, I mean, I know I feel like we've got a story about it happening every four months or, you know, or so. Yeah. I do think like anything, though, when one thing happens, there's a people are a little more um, dialed in to seeing another thing happening. Yeah. And I also yep. think. I also think sometimes our friends at the national media like to connect dots that really don't need to be connected. Like, um, like if it was a Boeing plane that clipped the wings of a, and I don't even know if that's the case, but if it was, they'd be like more trouble for Boeing. Like, the fact that it's a Boeing plane has nothing to do with the fact that the door fell off a different Boeing plane. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, you're I, think, right. I think that's part of it too. Um, it, I, that's my opinion, but yeah, let's not clip wings, shall we? I don't want to sit on the plane for four hours. Long as I've ever been on the plane is about two hours, and that was way too long. Two hours, yeah. I yeah. It, I get claustro. I'm not claustrophobic generally, but when you're sitting on the ground and not like yeah. at the gate, I I got claustrophobic once, and I was kind of like. I was like kind of freaking out and um and I guess they got a um I guess they got a free voucher for a meal. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. For Locked 4 up. hours. 4 hours. <laughs> you get a chicken salad sandwich and a biscoff. <laughs> let, me, let me guess it's like it's somewhere in the airport so they save yeah. like 30 bucks. Oh yeah. Ridiculous. But no question about it. But that's yeah, about I, it. Other, other than that, it was uh, pretty quiet last night. So. so that's the magnificent news from the magnificent news anchor. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a fire in St. Paul. Uh, a oh, fire. Uh, I, n- nobody hurt though. So I, I um, I think it. Well, nobody's hurt. I know that right now. Well, that's good. Uh, Puxatawney Phil and his wife Phyllis. Yes, Puxatawney Phil has a wife named Phyllis. They're gonna mm-hmm. have. Yeah. They're gonna have a some groundhog babies, which I guess is the first time that's ever happened in the history of Puxatawney Phil. Right, exactly. Now, we did ask the question yesterday. The guy who named that area where they have that every year, do you think he ever had sex in his life? Gobbler's Knob, yeah, I know. I mean, Gobbler's Knob is the best you could come up with? Really? What are you thinking about right now? I mean, think about that. Let's see. There's some goblin and there's a. I'm knob. sure they. I'm sure that was like an old, way, way, way back uh-huh. thing before those. Either of those two things, or maybe <laughs> not. Maybe somebody had a really great sense of humor. <laughs> maybe some. Or the mind uh, of you, a twelve, or, or the mind of a twelve-year-old. You know, either way. I had a listener, a woman, send me names. She she said, "You think gobbler's knob is bad?" She sent me names of other towns in Pennsylvania. Yeah, there's like 20 of them that have the weirdest names. I, it's just you know, like Bent Dick Creek. That is a town named Bent Dick Creek. It's like okay, just take a That's left a, over there at Bent Dick yeah. Creek. <laughs> I guess so. It's like okay, but yeah, I I'll have to track down the list because it's a pretty impressive well, list. I I just quick looked at like funny names in Pennsylvania. There are definitely so, uh, there's an Intercourse, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, Nanty Glow Climax <laughs> Climax uh, is in there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. There's there's a couple. We have a climax here too. I think. Yeah, right? we do. There's a climax, Minnesota. We do. Indeed. Yeah, we do. Down boy. <laughs> what what's it? What's that one old saying? When you're going to Emily, you got to take a left to to end up. To, uh, there's a little actually. Jim Paul, call in. I know you're listening, Jim Paul. Valley Oles. Is climax by it. Emily? Yes. Yeah, before you get to Reamer, that's what it is. It ends okay, up, well, I know you get I the know. climax with Emily before you get to Reamer or something like that. That's <laughs> like, that all okay. tracks. I've been up there before. <laughs> uh, that's not the exact you will, the the exact uh, <laughs> sequence of it all, but somebody will know. Somebody can send it in. <laughs> Mr. Egger, thank you, sir. We will talk to you in about a week when I get back from five whole days at Disney World. You, I'll be in a good gosh, mood. I can't wait to hear. So we got it. We have a we have a show next week, though, right? Yes. Yep. You guys okay. are doing a show, and you don't need me. There's no question about it. Well, that's not true, but yeah. All right, Pally, I'll talk right. to you in nine days. Bye, guys. Thanks, man. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48 minute evaluation, 952 925 5608. We shall take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes. 
I'm telling you, man, we've got Bob, Bob Sansford up. Now, I mean, what better show could you do than you do Phil Mackey, Chris Eggert, then Bob, C- Bob Sansevier, then Tim Lammers, and then finally you hit a woman with Kristen Burt at the end of the show. What do you think? Nothing better. Yeah. Like, I, that's the perfect. That's an all-star lineup. Yeah. yeah. It really is. It's an all-star lineup. That's what I was thinking. No question about it. <laughs> We'll be right back. Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all of your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98 and take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146 and use promo code TOM. And you get free shipping on your entire order, so call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. Hi guys, it's Chris Sager from Channel 5 Morning News along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there were so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930 or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And now it's time for Sanny. What up? What up? What would be like, Freaky Deaky? <laughs> hey, uh, can I play that game? How many cities did you name? Well, let's see. Like Climax, Reamer. Uh, what were the other ones? Uh, there Climax, was Climax, Reamer. Climax, there's a blue ball. <laughs> there's a blue ball. Blue ball yeah. village in Maryland. Yeah, intercourse was another one. Intercourse, yep. That's Beaver. Yeah. Jeff just messaged into the show. He goes French Lake, Indiana. French Lake. And Tom, your favorite. I'm sure you've been to Sugar Tit, South Carolina. Sugar Tit, South Carolina, baby. So it's just a short drive from Honey Hole, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and and PP Township in Ohio. This is just not, why would they do that to people? But you, you also, though, you'd have to take a plane if you're one of those to go to Wanker's Corner in Oregon. Wanker's Corner. I hear that's where you, I hear that you, that's where you got a second home, Bob. <laughs> Who would want to live in Embarrass, Minnesota? You live in a town named Embarrass. <laughs> why? Or you could live in Keister, Minnesota. Keister, <laughs> Keister. Yeah. Hey, I'm in your Keister right now. I mean, I'm in Keister. I mean, what I meant to say was. Yeah, I, why do they get these names? I don't get it. It's, it's I just fun, don't though. get it. I'm surprised, actually, to tell you the truth, with all the nut jobs that live in my lovely uh, hometown. 
I'm surprised it's still called St. Paul. I'm sure we can't be having a religious name. we got to change it. When will that? Because it will happen. I can guarantee you that. No question it's going to yep. happen. Yeah, you cannot have a St. Paul. Sorry, that's no. too Catholic. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah, drop the even. You won't be able to drop the saint. It'll it'll be like what they did with Lake Calhoun. They'll give it a Native American Native American name. Yeah, exactly. You know, it'd be great though. They could be like my grandma, uh, Minneapolis, Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> so Minneapolis would have it would no longer be St. Paul. It'd be Schminneapolis. What do you think? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I don't I really understand. Embarrass Minnesota. And what's his name was from Embarrass? One of the great athletes of all time was from Embarrass, Minnesota. God, what the hell is his name again? Bronco Nagurski. Bronco was from Embarrass? I believe so. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he died on the – still up in like – International where, Falls is where he – I think he had his, shot, yes. his gas station, right? Yes, that's exactly right. No question about it. So, Sandy, what's the latest with you, pal? Well, I mean, you, I know you've talked a lot about your twins and how great, nice to win, but lose Royce Lewis for a period of time. I mean, oh, they, they don't have the severity, but you're looking at a level one, which is the, the least, is like two weeks, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks. Could be months, potentially. Yeah, it could be. It's, I don't know why. So, I think Tevin was mentioning, and maybe AJ jumped in the conversation, too, that once you hurt your knees – you got problems from the knees on down for the rest of your life. Well, the quad, I mean, you think, oh, quad, it's just a month. Well, that controls what you do yeah. with your knee. Controls yes. everything with your leg. I mean, it's, uh, it, and I'm sure all of us have seen it. It. He was just turning second. Yep. He was turning second and it just snapped, apparently. And that's not a, uh, I mean, it, it's not that normal. And it, yep, guys get it, but it's not that normal have an injury like that. No, I wouldn't think so. You know, with my diminutive calf muscles that I have, I'm kind of surprised I never get hurt, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, when you're, you know, you're in, especially with all the uh the 40-yard dashes you do for it. Yeah, there was no program. question. When I'm rounding and the, second yeah, and the cutting you do. I mean, he rounded second. You got one guy <laughs> you, you, your heart goes into your throat when he hits yep. the outfield, you know, when he gets anywhere near the wall and the warning yep. track. Oh no! Now this guy, he rounds second. You got to worry next time he's out there again. And he started out with a homie. He was, he had two hits. He was having a great start. I wouldn't know Bob because they wouldn't let me. Watch. I went to about eighty-five different channels. Catherine was trying to help me and everything. We I just, I could not that. find the game anywhere. Well, wasn't it that you that you could not get it on? Uh, well, I mean at Bally, you couldn't get the Bally North where you are. Nope. Nope. They got Bally the Sports. MLB? MLB does MLB? not work. It would. I tried to get it on M, and they had the game on MLB, but I couldn't watch it. I don't know why they won't. I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe they. Well, hate that doesn't me. make That's sense, though. I know. You'd want people to support your team, wouldn't well, you? Here's the good news: you have a day before the next game to spend all day on the phone calling MLB.com and finding out what do you have to do. Well, Dan Chesky. Dan Chesky called me last night. You got to go over to ESPN one. And then, so he's telling us that didn't work either though. Unfortunately, ah, what the hell? I don't have a solution for you. Uh, nobody does. So I, I guess I'm not going to be seeing the first month and a half of the twin season, but that's the way it goes. Well, you know what? You do it like, uh, do you remember how Ronald Reagan used to do the games? He would listen on the radio or the ticker, and then he would reenact it. You just need to go on ESPN, and then you can reenact and maybe have Catherine give you a play-by-play. Of what uh, she, gives, she gives me a play-by-play of my life every day, so I got that's enough anyway. Here's and, another thing you did wrong. And, okay, and that's what I was going to say. I'm guessing you could do things a lot better. <laughs> yeah, got- none of us, none of us have ever heard that though. That are married. Oh no, not at all. I just heard something before I came on the show about what I could do better. <laughs> was it important? Uh, they're all, Tom, they're all vitally important. That's true. Vital. Yeah, Absolutely. You have to say that because you never know when the room is bugged or they can, they hear everything. <laughs> they do. It's incredible <laughs> the hearing they have when you, when you don't need them to. It is true. So the twins win at what? Four to one was the four final to one, score. Yep. It's a good and game. I mean, good game. But again, it's, it's, there's a pall over the game. Yeah. Because of what happened. And then, yep. I mean, you got a great Lopez gave you, he had a, his first bat, he was a little nervous, and he settled down after giving up a home run. And then, uh, I mean, to get your closer, Duran is out, but then they got to, you know, Griffin Jacks closed it out. So, you know, he's probably going to be the guy, although he'll, 
knowing Rocco, he'll use a number of guys in the closing situations. Yeah, probably what's trust. going on. We're talking to Phil Mackey this morning. I predicted they uh, have today off, of course, and I predict they'll lose tomorrow and win on Sunday. Two out of three? Two yeah. out of three, baby, which is great. Be well, wonderful. You, you win every series two out of three, you're going to have one hell of a record come you the end of the that, year. Right. No question so, about it. There is that. And then, uh, now you've been, did you, did you, I'm sure you guys talked about this whole Timberwolves thing. No, not yet. No. Well, you know what happened. I mean, I, the Mark Laurie and A Rod, Alex Rodriguez, yes. they wanted to buy 80% of the team. Yes. They had one uh, Carlisle Capital. Their deal with them fell through to come up with, uh, I think it was 300 million they were going to get. Then they had another company called Dylan. Well, they missed the deadline. And mm-hmm. Glenn Taylor said, well, it's done. You know, he's got to keep the, the team. And you got Laurie talking, well, he just has seller's remorse. Seller's remorse, my ass. You missed the deadline. And you had ways to extend it, and you didn't. I have a question so, for you. What? Glenn Taylor, I believe, bought that team for $78 million. Yes. And it's now worth $3.2 billion. Two five That's... or three? It's gone up to three two. <laughs> well, they these guys were buying it a year or what is it for three years, whatever it was when they got involved at one five. Right. So it's appreciated by at least a billion. Why yes. Taylor's a businessman? Why wouldn't he say, "Hey, you missed the deadline. You're done." Because yeah. yep. it's worth a lot more. I don't blame him. <laughs> Yeah, that's what this feels like to me is he goes, look at all this success, and now all of a sudden all these tickets, this team is, you know, selling as I'm about to be out the door. Let's uh, renegotiate this, and I'm going to put back off them, pull the team back. But the Lori, by seller's remorse, you had opportunities to make the deadline. You could have gotten – worked out things with Lee to get an extension. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You don't just say it's seller's remorse. No, it's a guy that wants to make another billion dollars. Again, I, I mean, I, you don't want to be portrayed, oh, I'm sticking up for a billionaire. In this case, Glenn Taylor did nothing wrong. I they agree. had a deal. The deadline passed. If you presented the money, it would be your team today, and you exactly. didn't do that. And, so. it's, you know, then Taylor couldn't do a thing about it. Nope. So uh, that one I don't quite under, you know, understand why I, why they think that they should – you know, seller's remorse. Okay, we'll we'll go with that. Well, is he putting it back on the market, or is he no, just he not, not, just no, not he's selling it at all? That's what he said. Yeah. He see, I thought all along his plan was to have his daughter is the top executive at Taylor Corp. One of his daughters, mm-hmm. and uh, not that not Mary uh, Taylor Moore. Remember that? We talked about yeah, that Mary one. Taylor it's, Moore. Yeah, not her. It's, it's the other <laughs> daughter, who is very a very savvy, terrific business mind. She could run the team, but. I, I don't know enough about this, but he better start moving the team over to her now. The guy's yeah. in his eighties. I mean, he looks like he's good and in good, you know, good health. But you need to make that transition so it's not a mess. Or maybe he has. I'm sure he's done yeah. the right thing. He has it in the trust. He's got it protected. But why would you let go of something worth two point five billion when you already are a billionaire? Mm-hmm. That's true. Brilliant report, Sandy. We're going to talk to you. Uh, I won't see you next week, but I'll see you following because I'll be worn out from Disney World with the five-year-old and the seven-year-old. So I, I heard uh, you talking to Eggert. So you guys are, are as AJ and uh, yeah, they're going to be uh, on. Kevin, they're going to be doing. So I'm I'm going to be on with you guys on Monday and Friday. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you're going to take turns uh, being the main guy. Who's going to be the, the cheese? No, it'll be uh, Phil, Phil and Judd. Philip Mackey. Oh, Mackey's going to do it. All right. Mm-hmm. So they're going to and, alternate, or is it just it, together? I guess, I guess on 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 your days, Bob, it'll be it'll be Phil, and then Judd will be on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, yeah. I, was, I was afraid I get stuck with Judd. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. All right, get no, the hell off no, the show. I've known Judd that. since he was. A, I mean, actually, since he truly was a kid, just yeah, getting started true. out. I, I I think the world of the young man, not so young anymore, but I think the world is younger than me. God. They're both a couple of good guys, no question about it. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Annie. Take it easy. We'll take a break. Be right back. Timmy Lammers joins us right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here 
or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning in your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4% point nine star rating so their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and spelling how it should call 952-z-e-r-o-r-e-z or visit zeroresminnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the tom bernard special zero res spell it forward or backward it spells the same schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush this is the tom bernard podcast Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Lammers brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Timmy, what's the latest? Well, I don't know if you just heard, but Lou Gossett Jr. died. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Oh, Officer and a gentleman. <laughs> no. I'm underwater. Underwater report today. Underwater. Oddly enough, oddly enough, um, the kids and I watched uh, the Mothman prophecies last. Oh, week sure. With Richard Gear, and they're saying, "Well, where do we know Richard Gear from?" And when you say an officer and a gentleman, they don't know what the hell that is. I mean, that was 1980 something, right? 82. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's a legendary role, though, man. Lou Gossett Jr. won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, what a what a film, what a career for Lou Gossett Jr. So, yep. too bad about that. He did a movie, which I absolutely loved, called Digstown. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you ever saw it. <laughs> I call it The Sting in the Ring. That's all I will say. Uh, James Woods is in it as well. Terrific movie. Bruce Dern playing the stereotypical Bruce Dern. Oh, yeah. Slimy role. (laughs) But yeah, yeah. So obviously have to note that because that's a pretty big deal, man. What is Bruce Dern's best line in history? He got on a bus. He said this line. It was wonderful. A guy was trying to give him a threatening look. You yeah. don't remember this? No, no. Well, if you tell me, it might when when I hear it. He follows a thug onto a city bus, and the thug turns around and, and scowls at him. And Bruce Dern goes, "What are you trying to do? Eyeball me to death?" <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What, what film is that from? I don't remember, but he was a terrific actor. He's not around anymore, no, is he? I, I think he is. He is, is he really? God, he's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Love him. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think that. I, like most young boys, grew up hating him because he killed John Wayne and the Cowboys. That's right. 
But he did a movie not too long ago, a few years back, called Nebraska, which is just terrific. Oh, so, sure. That's yeah, good. That is a great good movie. actor. And he was, yeah, he's he's been around. He's he's still doing yep. a film here and there. But anyway, uh big film in theaters this week is Godzilla. I guess this is how you we say the title. Godzilla Times Kong. It's like a it's not Godzilla and Kong. It's not God- Godzilla versus Kong. It's Godzilla times Kong, the new empire. <sighs> boring. Talking a little boring, are we? Not boring. I mean, you just hope that somehow it's like, okay, what are you going to do in this movie that's going to be different? Yeah. Because really, in the end, it's crash, boom, bang, crash, boom, bang. Godzilla has these really, really loud roars, uh, squeals, you know. <laughs> That's my Godzilla impersonation. Yes. And then Kong, Kong has the loud, loud roars. And, you know, I mean, look, the CGI is spectacular. There's no denying that. But we've seen this five times now. This is the mm-hmm. fifth movie yeah. in yep. the MonsterVerse that went back to 2014. And I will say, I thought Kong Skull Island was terrific, as was Godzilla versus Kong in 2021. I think they're entertaining movies but it's just kind of hit and miss honestly i think i fell asleep during godzilla king of the monsters just because again we're just seeing so much of this stuff so you really kind of depend on plot changes which in this one they do have something different going on you do have uh a new threat because godzilla and kong had their their battle last movie so now we have this new threat, the Scar King, which lives in Hollow Earth, which is this cavernous environment in below Earth's surface. And he's got this creature called Shimu, who is a reptilian giant that breathes ice. So if they get to the surface, it could be another ice age. Just like, oddly enough, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire last week. It's like, geez, uh, ice age on the brain or what? But uh yeah. Uh, yeah, and two weeks in a row, too. Um, so, you know, uh, the idea is, okay, they can't be enemies anymore. We got to get them to be allies at best, uneasy allies, but they're yeah. allies, and they got to defeat these other two creatures in the film. So that's your pretty much boilerplate description of the plot. You do have humans in it. Like last time you have uh, Rebecca Hall and Brian Tyree Henry, who is very funny. Dan Stevens is funny. You know, they got humor. They're in, in, they're in on the joke. And they did something that I've never seen. Uh, Godzilla, I mean, no, excuse me. Kong has a giant abscess tooth. Oh. Uh, they have to find a way to pull that out. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> so, you know, they're in on the joke. Um, and they have fun with it. Does he go to the dentist or something? <laughs> well, there are dentists out there, but they're dentists for titans. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what they build. Do. I, I, does does Kong have insurance? That's what I want to know. Or, Dental does the insurance. US government, yeah. Does Monarch pick this up? I mean, I who the it. hell picks up that bill? Delta <laughs> Dental. Yeah, they, 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 they put like the anesthesia mask on him, like count back from 10. There right? you go. There you go. But, but Godzilla's his fang in front they need to remove it probably like the size of me <laughs> you know yes dudes. so yeah no there's some unexpected well not unexpected anymore because i blew it spoiler um but no 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 you got some stuff like that in there and 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 i again they break it up with some comic relief and and, and brian tyree henry he plays this blogger scientist who kind of he's kind of looked at as a conspiracy theorist mm-hmm. and 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 he needs proof that these creatures exist and all that stuff exists because he was supposed to keep that under wraps. So he's funny. Um, But yeah, they look a little also into why uh, Godzilla and Kong are enemies and, you know, okay, explore the mythology. That's cool and everything. But ultimately, you know, young kids, just like we enjoyed the guy in the rubber suit when we were growing up, it's kind of just a movie for them, really. Um, it. It's PG thirteen movie, but I don't think it's too terribly scary. I mean, if you bring toddlers, I don't think that's a good idea because it's very, very loud. Uh, but no, apart from that, I mean, it's you know, it's pretty innocuous stuff. I mean, PG thirteen, 
creature violence is what the ratings uh the ratings block says creature violence and action scenes so when 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 kong rips things apart it's not blood it's like green goo inside so oh, jesus don't have to that worry about nasty. that so, uh, you know i'm again just considering the audience they, they there's there's an intended audience here it's younger kids it's teenagers you know whatever yeah i give it a I'll I'll let it off the lammer hammer hook. I'll give it a 5.5. But yeah. I have a friend Tim to annoy me every time he brings that up. He goes, "Are you going to go see Gojira?" I'm like, <laughs> "We're not in Japan, asshole." Okay? It's Godzilla <laughs> yeah. in America. It's not Gojira here. All right. But yeah. what was one of the movies called Gojira? Uh no, I I, I didn't well, think you so. know what? I think maybe because the, the Godzilla films, obviously Toho Incorporated or whatever, they own the rights. Yeah. And, yep. and really do dictate what's in these movies to this day. And I do believe that, you know, over in Japan, it probably was pronounced that way. But no, it was, yeah. Definitely when you in interpret Japan. it here, mm -hmm. it's Godzilla. So, yeah, we'll go with Godzilla. So, yeah. So, going from there to streaming. Streaming. I actually, surprisingly enjoyed this movie it's a remake of roadhouse that's on amazon prime video i saw they made i haven't seen the movie but i saw their, they made it and there's a lot of loyalty to the 1989 film starring patrick swayze mm -hmm. okay i i honestly i remember one thing from it i guess i remember well obviously patrick swayze in it and sam elliott and i love sam elliott and kelly lynch minnesota's own kelly mm -hmm. lynch Yep. Uh, but, uh, the, the, the line from Dalton, the character played by Patrick Swayze in the movie was, it's my way or the highway, my way or the highway. And that's Love the that. only macho BS that I remember from the film <laughs> because it is just macho BS. Let's be honest. But in this one, we have Jake Gyllenhaal. I have to tell you, man, that dude got ripped for this movie. Oh, well, he's a good actor too. And he's a great actor. Yeah, he's terrific. Mm -hmm. yep. And, you know, I mean, look, he can take a role that might be just par for the course for some people and really kind of make something of it. You really do believe that he can kick people's arses. Mm -hmm. You really do. Mm -hmm. But the guy that I was really surprised to see, his first film role, you don't want to mess with this guy, Conor McGregor. Oh, oh God. My God. God. You get in a fist I mean, fight? Uh, yeah, he got in a few of those, and <laughs> a lot of MMA stuff. Although, oddly enough, he does not play an MMA, MMA fighter. It is actually Jake Gyllenhaal's character who has oh. a past in the ring that he's trying to escape. Right. So he's hired to be a bouncer at this bar, this roadhouse in Florida, in the Florida Keys, Tommy. And in the Keys, baby. In the Keys, and there's this land baron who wants the roadhouse property, so he's sending a bunch of thugs in there to try to raise enough hell that the owner will just sell it. Well, then when they bring Dalton, the new Dalton in there, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, mm -hmm. you know, he takes everybody down. So this land baron who's in prison eventually dispatches Conor McGregor's character, Knox, to the scene. And not only does are, is he frightening, I mean, he kicks ass, which you would expect. Mm -hmm. He's really funny. Really? <laughs> He's really funny. And and so it's like, you know what? This dude hasn't done MMA since 2021. I think I think we're looking at an action film career at the very least for this guy. Because he, he really does have a presence. I, I thought, you know, Conor McGregor, what are we going to get here? Um but we get something that I think is of note. I mean, I thought the guy was really good in this. I, I'm telling you, I like the guy. I like the whole cast. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is terrific. And and uh, I'm trying to think who else. Daniela Melchior, Melchior. She was in the Suicide Squad as a rat catcher. She's in it. Billy Magnuson is in it. Jessica Williams plays the bar owner. And it's worth it. It's worth it. Again, I, you know, I posted about it on Facebook and there are a lot of people that are, you know, they have this allegiance to that original film and that's great. Uh, you know, to me, I just kind of looked at this. I couldn't remember much of the original. So I just look at it as a completely different movie. It, it, you know, I think the, the, the original Patrick Swayze version, he was a mixed martial. He was a martial artist. Now mm -hmm. it's MMA stuff. Right. So the action is just that much more intense. 
I tell you what, man, I, you would not want to take a punch from Conor McGregor. Oh, I guarantee you that. You Holy God. It used to be that. And I still fear the guy, but I think, you know, Mike Tyson too. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine getting socked by Mike Tyson or Conor McGregor? Holy well, God. Mike Tyson's going to fight a guy 30 years younger than he is. It probably beat the he, piss out of him. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, McGregor's big thing was, uh, is it, uh, who is the, the champ that McGregor took on a couple of years ago in the ring, in the boxing ring? Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, who is that? Madoff or whatever. Nemurga Madoff, the, like, he's like Romanian or something like that. No, no, actually, you know who it was? It was Floyd Mayweather. Jr. Oh, gotcha, got it. Oh, in the boxing yeah. ring. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the boxing ring. In the boxing ring. And he lost in 10 rounds, but he, he went 10 rounds with uh, Mayweather, who was on the verge or was 40, and that was it for him. And he, he finished his career 50-0. and 0. Uh, But McGregor says, we're going to have a rematch, which it never happened because Mayweather <laughs> retired. But, I mean, yeah, he's that tough a dude. And you got to remember, I mean, now all of a sudden he's in the ring with boxing rules, you know, and he had to wear gloves. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, he is he is a frightening guy, but, I, you know, I, I did a, a piece for Forbes. Sorry, I got to plug that. But I discovered some interesting things, like uh, he's a great family guy. He, mm -hmm. He's been with uh, his uh, partner. They, they're engaged now since 2008. They have four kids. You know, she was with him, and he was nothing. So, you know, uh, he's got a great relationship. Plus, his record is 22-6-0. and 0. How many of those do you think were knockouts? 22 no 19 <laughs> 19 and one, one win by submission <laughs> that shows you how tough conor mcgregor is yep, man you're right but uh yeah he's a hellraiser and he says what he wants people get pissed at him but he is who he is and uh again i think he's really good in in this movie especially because you don't know what to expect but he's really good timmy thank you another brilliant report and i'll talk to you in a week all righty, Tommy. So next week you're going to uh next week going to Disney World with the with the grandkids for, for five oh, days. Yeah. That'll be good. Well, hopefully you're gonna get cool enough weather. You're, I nice. think you're going a good time of the year, yeah. So all right, enjoy. And I understand there'll be other folks in for you next yes. week. So I, yep. I heard you at the end of tail end of Bob's thing. So yep. all right, very go. good. Have fun. Thanks, Timmy. See you guys next week. The other guy is brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant, Minnesota personal injury.com. You know, no matter how I try, he still steps on me every time I do the outro. I wait and wait and wait. Ooh, there's an opening. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I love Timmy. He's a great guy. We Speaking of great people, we'll be right back. Kristen Burt joins us right after this. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road? or the child that followed. Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther, 
with my client on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, you are. Kristen Burt Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to NABanko.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Kristen Burt, KB2, what's the latest? Ah, I didn't hear the ah. top part of, ah, good morning. I didn't hear the top part of Tim's um, report, but I don't know if he mentioned that Lou Gossett Jr. passed away. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He's very sad. I loved him. I know. I know. And worked all the way up until the end. He's in the color purple. So mm-hmm. pretty amazing at 87. 87 years old. Too young to be dying these days. Back in the days, I was very old, but now it's kind of middling. Oh, uh, well, the age of death is decreasing yeah, so instead of going you're going the wrong direction 77 no i think that's the most recent one for men at least that i saw no <laughs> <laughs> i'm practicing my death stance i know sick. i lost my uncle this week at 77 you guys. Did? Ah, that's terrible it's awful i'm actually very sad about it oh yeah i can understand yeah. that 77 seems awfully young but you know what why a drop in in the uh, age of death do they did know why that is? I think COVID has something to do with it. Really? And what? a lack of health care over the pandemic. A lot of people didn't do their basic yeah. wellness checks, things like that. Pe- women put off like mammograms, things that actually, you know, really matter in terms of preventative care. So. Why well, do have to call it that? Because in my neighborhood, like, yo, mammogram. That's <laughs> what that sounds like to me. Mammogram. You yeah, don't want mammogram. a mammogram. I'll tell you that much. They're not that comfortable. Probably not. Mm-mm. Probably not. For men, it's called a titty twister, though. It's totally Is different. that what it's called? Is yes. that the official medical term <laughs> yes, for that? Yes, it is. Tom? Absolutely. Dr. Berditzman told me just the other day that, oh, I have to ask you a question before I forget. Um, <laughs> but does it have to do with the titty twister? <laughs> no, it does not. It, it does not. Because it was, I mean, that's a jump. It's a jump, Tom. <laughs> it is a jump. There's no But I was talking about men. When a, the titty thing came up, that was men, not women I was talking about. So um, what is the name of the woman? Because, you know, I've been watching Fargo with Catherine. There are a couple of people in it I don't think are, they are very good. But there is a woman. She plays the very reserved, very strict woman. Like even when she's yelling at someone, she goes like this. You're going to have to pay the price for that, you know. It's <laughs> just the way it is. Who is that woman? She is phenomenal. You know who I'm talking about? What season? This season. It's the this last season. season. Season five or six? Oh, my God, is she good. Yes, I spoke to him yesterday. I gave him 24 hours to vacate, or I probably will have him killed. It's like, oh, well, pardon me. I, I got to find out who she is. She I know, is I'm looking really, at IMDb. God, is she good. I, You know, it's... Uh, I, I don't know how else to describe her. She is very reserved, but she is so, she's really good. This actor is very good at playing a mean person without acting mean. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's just, like, there's this signal she sends like, don't mess with me. You know? You like so, women like that, Tom. I do love women like, don't mess with me, man. That's all I'm saying. I have mother and two sisters. And then Catherine bringing up the uh, even worse treatment. Yeah, no. She no, keeps you in line. That's what happens. Oh, she does. There's no question about it. No getting around it. But yeah, I got to figure out what that woman's name is because she's really, really good. Um, that show's pretty. I still cannot adjust to to John Hamm's character. I just, I think the problem I have is Kristen that I hate his character so much. I don't like him even playing the character. But <laughs> isn't, isn't that, that a of sign weird? of a good actor? It is. Love? There's yeah. no doubt about it. But he's such a prick. Oh. <laughs> Walks into a room, there are three guys standing there, looks the guy in the middle, doesn't like him, so he shoots him in the forehead. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, that's a little harsh, but other than that. It's good, though. <laughs> yeah, it is really good. 
It's really, really good. So what's happening in your world? Uh, you know, continuing on with all of like the, the Diddy coverage, I just think it's been, it's been really crazy, but, um, a lot of good things I think to watch this weekend. So I think you, you guys are going to be in good shape. Steve Martin documentary. Is oh, that I you down Steve with Martin. that? Yeah. No, it's a Steve two part Martin's documentary great. on Apple plus kind of going through his entire life. I thought you might like that. And, um, we were the lucky ones limited series that is um, currently on Hulu um, about a family that's get split up during the Holocaust. Oh, it's dark. It's deep. It's heavy, but really well acted. Joey King was one of my favorites. Uh, she was in the act about mm-hmm. the gypsy Rose Blanchard case. Mm-hmm. Great actress. And she's in it too. So that might be another one to check out this weekend. Yeah. On a lot of, I'm telling you, I know I mention it every week, but television is phenomenal. It's the best it's ever been. There's no, no, there've been some great shows in the past, but a lot of it's really good now. Yeah. A lot of really good things. It's slowing down in terms of like the stream, you know, when we were just having like 10 things come out a week, it's slowing down. It's about like four or five, like solid releases each week mixed with film and television that's coming out on streaming. So I think we're start we're starting to see that like, Hollywood put on the brakes on the level of content that they've been putting out, right. but that still hasn't affected the quality so far. You know, I just thought of something just now, and it has nothing to do with anything except for the fact that we're on this theme. If I were a news anchor and I had to cover the P. Diddy story, I'd go, well, here's a Diddy twister, right? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> or am I taking this too far for you, Chris? Uh, well... <laughs> Maybe for some of Diddy's alleged victims, it might well, be too yeah, far that for might them. be too. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Now, so he's been charged of like this. He hasn't been charged with anything. We have oh, he to. Hasn't. He's, okay. he's got civil cases. He's got like four civil cases. One he's already settled. Though he's settled the Cassie Ventura one, and then there's like three others um, out there. And then on top of that, he also has a criminal investigation going on, and that's why the feds raided God. his homes in Los Angeles and Miami. And we will see what comes from that. So far, the only thing that's really leaked is that they found firearms on his property, which I kind of expected, and I don't really yeah. think that that is. Whether they're legal or illegal, maybe maybe that's like the the case on on that. Mm-hmm. But we haven't heard other what's happening. If they discovered, you know, they're collecting all the tech data. You know, they want yeah. they want the phones, they want the laptops, they want the tablets right now to see how they can put the pieces together and if there was an actual sex trafficking ring. Has he ever been convicted of anything? Um. I believe, he, I mean, I know he was convicted in that. Oh, no, he was acquitted. I was going to say he was acquitted in that club case that he was arrested. But mm-hmm. I was like, has he ever been charged with anything beyond? I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Or if it's just been like a misdemeanor and then. Right. You know, and some of the major charges, even from that club case in 1999, where he got into an altercation and then shots were fired and they found <sighs> the gun. God. They, they let it all go. They let it all go. So Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's just, and I, I it's still a, he made all his money as a producer. Is that correct? Music producer. And then of course, like like most music moguls branched out into fashion. He had a big fashion line that was oh, sold yeah. at Macy's mm-hmm. for a long time. Yep. Yep. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Ciroc vodka is his alcohol that he peddles all over the place. Oh, okay. And he was one of the first, I feel like, to really step into that space. So He's been very successful with that. I would guess he's not my kind of guy. Yeah. No, I, I would say he's probably not a lot of people's kind of guy. <laughs> stories. It feels like every yes. celebrity now is going on a podcast and they have a Diddy story of some sort where oh, really? like, he tried to get me into some very peculiar situations at parties. And they're like, yeah, you have to stay away from him. Maybe yeah. I will do the the family podcast. I'm going to just call it the Diddy Twister today, just so they'll tell stories about P. Diddy. <laughs> Well, 50 Cent is has been like way out there with the stories and 50 his ch- 50, 50. 50's child um his his child's mother was involved with um Diddy and oh now he God. is seeking 50 Cent is seeking full custody of his kid because he feels like his oh. child's mother is sort of like ensnared in the web of yep. Diddy's mess. 
So I don't know how that's going to play out. But Fiddy has been talking about Diddy for a long time. And I will say 50 Cent has been sounding the alarm on people. And he always turns out to be right. Have you noticed that? Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he's right that Floyd, Floyd Mayweather can't read? When, Probably. <laughs> when he went on whatever Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, it was like, I will give you, it was like $500,000 if you can read one page out of Cat in the Hat without stuttering or Harry Potter book. That's what it was. Yeah. Harry have Potter. Seen, have you seen that, Tom? No. Oh, I'll see if I can find it quick. Is it phenomenal? <laughs> oh, yeah. He essentially got, somehow got into a beef with Floyd Mayweather and challenged him to read a book and he was going to donate a bunch of money to some charity if, oh, if 50 God. Cent or if uh, Floyd could read a Harry Potter book. Well, well, Floyd Mayweather's a smart guy, isn't he? He's not a moron. He allegedly can't read that great. Whoops. So, yeah. That's not necessarily a good thing then, but other than that. Yeah, and then he had a big fight with Randall Emmett, who was a Hollywood movie producer who also oh. ran a bunch of scams. He was, <laughs> and I guess he borrowed money from 50, and 50 oh, started an online fight that like, went back and forth on Twitter. And then Randall was typing and called him Fofty, and it was hilarious because he's like, Who's Fofty? But. <laughs> Fiddy managed to get his money back within like a week after it publicly embarrassing Randall Emmett. Um, and, you know, the LA Times has done a deep dive on Randall Emmett and all the scams he's been running. And mm. I'm always like, see, he 50 is always right about it. I guess. I don't know. That whole world is so that's very distant in my life. I will tell you that. Yeah, I mean, it, the level of like what goes on like behind the scenes like i think yeah. people see all the surface stuff of like mm -hmm. the celebrities and who they're dating and who they're cheating on and all that stuff that's like one thing mm -hmm. but then the real behind the scenes stuff of like what we've seen with harvey weinstein or where we've seen people run scams and taking money and instead of investing it into a project you mm -hmm. know running off with it that's a much deeper level any closing comments sister should we be watching something well, I just gave you a couple things to watch this weekend. I know, but so. I'm just I'm still trying to figure out what that woman's name is in in uh Did we look it up on uh, IMDb? I, I I can't go anywhere and look it up because it'll cut you guys off from audio and video, so I can't it, check it. What show is it? Uh Fargo this season. Are you thinking Fargo of Jennifer Jason Lee? Are you thinking of Juno Temple? Yeah, Juno Temple's mm -hmm. fabulous. I love her on Ted Lasso. She's the one that's always sitting behind it. She's a very wealthy woman on the show. She, it seems like she finances a lot of maybe some untoward uh, gender uh, things. You know, I, I don't know. Her. I'm going to have to find out her name because she's really good. And I'll have it figured out by the time I get back from Disney World with 9,000 children. Yes, and sticky fingers and oh, yeah. bring Still your hand sanitizer because it is spring break and it is going to be swarming with kids. My favorite last year was when uh, Sage is only four years old and we get on the Magic Mountain train ride, the one that goes like literally sideways and that whole Thunder deal. Mountain. Thunder Mountain. There you go. That's what it is. Thunder Mountain. And I'm in the car behind him and he gets around that first curve where the little thing literally kind of even a little bit goes upside down. And as we're going around, I hear this three year old, four year old voice go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's me on roller coasters too. Yes, I get you it. On I feel too. sage big time. <laughs> he did not like it too much. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Especially if it goes upside down. Forget it. I am a oh, hot yeah. mess. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>